Dragon Ball? <laughs> that show's so gay. And it's about to get gayer. Hey guys, Mosoko X here, and welcome back for another edition of What If Week. In this series, we've pondered some frankly outlandish and rather interesting scenarios that wound up changing the world of Dragon Ball as we know it. But today, we have a very special question to tackle. Why possibly the most highly requested what if we've ever received on this channel? What if Goku is gay? The Dragon Ball fanbase has endeavoured to answer this question for decades, and there's no shortage of fanfiction or doujinshi that's built around this very idea. Nevertheless, we've all been asking for our own take on the concept, and after a lot of brainstorming, we think we're ready to throw our hat into the ring. So, without further ado, I present to you, what if Goku was gay? The first question we have to answer is, when does Goku's sexuality become relevant? Well, to be honest, through most of the original Dragon Ball, it's not. Goku's just a boy, and it's pretty clear to see that Grandpa Gohan never really told him much about the outside world. Romance and even gender are practically alien concepts to him. This 12-year-old's got bigger fish to fry. Sometimes, literally. So, our plucky young hero and his mystic journey is playing out more or less how you'd expect, all the way to the 23rd Tenkaichi Budokai, where Goku is reunited with his friends after three years apart while he was training with Kami. At 18 years old, he sprung up into a full-grown man. His friends hardly recognize him. But they're in for an even bigger surprise than that. This brings us to Goku's contest with the anonymous woman, who we know is Chi-Chi, of course. Like in canon, Goku doesn't remember her. Something that enrages Chi-Chi, who's been waiting for him all these years to fulfill his promise and marry her. After being handily defeated, Chi-Chi reveals the reason for her anger, her true identity, and the promise that Goku made to her so many years ago. You promised to marry me, Goku! The whole crowd is shocked. Even Goku has put two and two together by now, and realized how serious this is. Whoa, you're that girl! Goku's alarmed as he finally remembers, and now he has to confess that he didn't really know what he was agreeing to all those years ago. As well as, well, something else. Gee... I'm so sorry I forgot, but I'm afraid that I can't marry you because I'm gay. A second, even grander shock goes through the crowd. Goku's own friends can't believe it. Goku? Gay? It was one thing to learn he'd made such enormous promise to this Chi-Chi girl, but this has them questioning everything they thought they knew about Goku. They murmur to themselves, he's gay? Goku's into men? I didn't know he had it in him! And inevitably, oh gosh, that poor girl. Now, don't get me wrong, Goku's friends are happy for him. As surprising as it is to think of Goku having any interest in romance whatsoever, it would seem that in all the time apart he's discovered some things about himself. In fact, the whole crowd applauds his coming out, and the announcer commends him for his pride and courage, not just as a warrior but as a member of the gay community. But as you might expect, this is not what Chi-Chi was hoping to hear. Not in the least. For all her fiery temper though, Chi-Chi can't find it in her to blow up at Goku for this. It's clear now that he never even knew what he was promising her, which she finds more deflating than anything else. For all these years fixating on Goku and dreaming of being his bride one day, the only person she feels truly angry with in this moment is herself. So, doing her best to keep a brave face, she only dusts herself off and bows her head to her opponent, quickly congratulating him on both his victory and his coming out. But Goku doesn't feel too great about all this. Sure, he's loud and proud about who he is, and not even a very sad girl is going to change that, but it feels like he has to do something to cheer her up. I'm really sorry. If there's ever anything I can do to make up for it, maybe I could find you someone else to marry. I know a lot of great guys. <laughs> Whatever. I'm tired of great guys and their promises. I don't need anything more from you. Chi-Chi storms off in a huff. 
Goku resolves to do something nice to make up for it, somehow. But right now, he's got a tournament to worry about, as well as his curious friends who are all still reeling from the reveal. So, Goku and Chi Chi do not get together. A pretty major change in the grand scheme of things. Now, I bet you're all asking. But Masako, if Goku doesn't get with Chi Chi, then who? Calm down, calm down. We'll get to that little detail right now. You'd probably think the first choice for our eligible gay bachelor would be his childhood best friend, Krillin. But I have to say, he's not really Goku's type. He's never thought of Krillin that way before. Maybe with a bit of time, but he's not the one Goku's got sight on. Hey, don't worry, Krillin. I'm not gonna hit on you or anything. <laughs> You're not really my type. Oh. oh. So, Tien? Maybe Yamcha wants this thing with Bulma goes south? Mm, I don't think so. They're a bit older than Goku and lead very different lifestyles. What our protagonist is looking for in a partner is someone who shares his passions. Someone who's into martial arts, living in nature, testing your skills, self-improvement, and it's got to be someone new and exciting. Who matches that description, you may ask? Piccolo! I know, I know, he's on a mission to defeat Piccolo Jr., straight from Connie himself. But when they meet eyes, Goku feels excited. He'd kind of been expecting to face that nasty old Demon King again, but this guy is kind of cute. Not to mention he's looking forward to testing the fruits of his training against this powerful opponent. Nothing gets Goku's blood pumping like a powerful opponent. And so, as silly as it might be, Goku's taking a bit of a liking to his opponent in the finals. And, well, just look at how he looks at him. Ah, first love. So innocent. Then, of course, Piccolo and Kami have their confrontation, Kami in the body of Hero, trying to take care of things on his own without putting anyone else in danger. But then, as he attempts to trap Piccolo in the Mafu bar, Piccolo reverses the technique, sealing the Guardian of Earth in a bottle, and then swallowing it whole for good measure. Crush or no crush, Goku knows he's got to rescue Kami, defeat Piccolo, and save the world. The time has come. Ma Jr. vs Son Goku in the finals of the 23rd Tenkaichi Budokai. Goku's gonna need some smooth moves to dispatch his foe without putting Kami's life in jeopardy. Luckily, our hero is plenty smooth. <laughs> so I, I guess this is it, huh? That's right. The day you die, Son Goku. <laughs> yeah, well, guess we'll see if you're strong enough. I don't go down easy. I've been training all my life. It's been my sole focus from the day I was born. You are doomed to die by my hand. <laughs> wow, I'm flattered. <laughs> I, I mean, <clears throat> may the best man win. <laughs> oh yeah, smooth. From there, the battle proceeds as it does in canon. Piccolo grows giant, Goku rescues Kami, Piccolo nearly kills Goku but misses all his vital organs, all of them, and Goku defeats Piccolo with the same headbutt he used to defeat his father, minus the whole, you know, penetration. There'll be time for that later. Stop it. But of course, Goku spares Piccolo's life, and not just because he finds him cute either, but because he knows that if he kills Piccolo, Kami will die as well. Not only would he lose his mentor, the one who stood by him and nurtured his understanding of martial arts and LGBT identities. Hey, he had to learn it from someone. But the Earth would lose its Dragon Balls. And so, Goku tosses Piccolo a senzu and lets him off on his merry way. Looking at him with bright eyes and a wistful, yearning smile, he says, Can't wait to fight you again someday. May we meet again? Piccolo scoffs. In case you're curious, he hasn't picked up on any of Goku's signals. He grew up in the woods too, you know. Now, what happens after the Piccolo Jr. arc? Typically, this is when Goku and Chi Chi get married, but of course, that's not happened this one. What does gay Goku do for the three years before the start of Dragon Ball Z? What do his friends do? And how are they going to take it when he lets it slip that the reincarnation of the evil Demon King was sort of his man crush Monday? Well, the first person he really talks to is Krillin. These two friends have got a lot of catching up to do after all. And Krillin can't help but be baffled by his friend's show of respect towards this demon. 
Sure, you have to let him live, or else Kami and the Dragon Balls would be gone forever. But must the Senzu be necessary? What if he attacked them all right away? Goku just smiles and says, I don't know, Krillin. He seems really different from the old Piccolo. He just got a, a feeling he wouldn't do that. And now, Krillin can't help but notice as Goku speaks, he has this twinkle in his eye. He doesn't want to jump to conclusions or anything. He only just found out about Goku's orientation, and there's no way that this could possibly mean that... Yeah, no, no, there's no way. Right? Well, Goku, you sure uh, enjoyed that, despite how scary it was. Well, yeah. Going head to head with a guy like that. Boy, he sure is something else. Goku smiles and chuckles, giddy like a schoolboy. Well, uh, that's a, a way of putting it. But I can't help but feel like we're letting him off the hook too easy. I mean, a monster like that? Just loose in the world? Oh, Krillin, don't worry about it. Call me crazy, but I think he's gonna have some other priorities. Like training for a rematch. <laughs> He sure is pretty obsessed with me, huh? Goku seems almost eager to hear Krillin agree with it. Krillin's suspicion is starting to grow. And there is his eyes. Yeah, obsessed with getting revenge against you. Uh, you seem pretty high in him too for a guy who shot a hole through your chest. And at this point, Goku almost gets a little flustered by that. Uh, what? Oh, I just... <laughs> I don't know. I, I just got a feeling. <laughs> What a rush, you know? We always meet some incredible guys at this tournament, eh, buddy? Incredible is a specific choice of words. <laughs> what are you, uh, what do you mean, Krillin? <laughs> As you may be able to tell, Goku is not well-versed in the art of subtlety. It's written all over his face. Krillin just looks at him, squinting. Goku. What? Goku. What? What? Krillin, come on, what are you, what are you saying here? <sighs> Goku, listen, you're my best friend, okay? And you being gay, that doesn't change anything. I, I accept you as you are, but him, Goku? Him? Yep, Goku's been caught. Now he's red as a beat. What? <laughs> Krillin, I, I'm shocked at you, that you'd even... Okay, fine, yeah, I thought he was cute. Him? Cute? Krillin, I He's just- He's a demon, Goku! A demon bent on world domination, and specifically killing you! Goku raises his hands. Krillin, look, I, I get it, come on, let me let me talk here. Let That's me... the guy? That's who captures your attention? Hear me out, okay? Hear me out. Hear me out. It's he's a monster, Goku! He's cute, okay? What do you want from me? A sense of self-preservation? Krillin, it's it's a crush. He a just... crush on, on, on a demon! Yes, a crush. It's not like, jeez, I'm not falling for his personality or anything. Come on! Oh, and that makes it all okay, huh? Krillin, please let me talk. I can explain. Just let me, just let me explain, okay? Can I talk? <sighs> Okay, okay, go on. He's just... He's got a sort of... I, I don't know, a, this kind of competitive streak that's really... I don't know, he's, he's easy on the eyes, don't you think? He's green! Okay, and... He's also a demon! And that's just the... demon that killed your friend! Hey, no, wait. He didn't do that, and believe me, Krillin, I thought it was just gonna be Piccolo again. But this guy, he's like, he's totally different. Way shorter, if you can believe that. Goku, I just do not see Yeah, that. you don't, because it's not your crush, Krillin. It's mine. Of course you don't get it. I think there are a few other reasons. Some more considerations must Krillin. be made. Krillin, he's Out not- Out of anyone here, you looked at that guy who put God in a bottle and said to yourself, Yeah, that's him. Uh, okay, that's the Krillin, one. you don't have to now. be so- Come on, Krillin. It's not- I don't expect anything of it. It's just a crush. The crush is what's so concerning to me. What? You, you, like, okay, you're saying that you never look at a woman on the street, just a casual stranger, and you just think to yourself, wow, she's pretty. No, 
You, you don't do that. You're telling me that you don't do that. I have never been attracted to a demon, let alone someone who wants to murder my friends. Wink. It, it, it's me, though, Krill. None of you guys are in danger. It's me he wants. And you're disturbingly excited you, Krill, about that. Look at me. He is not going to be a problem. I have it handled. Just, just like, relax. Leave it to me. I don't want to leave it to you. I'm scared of what will happen. But it, what is that supposed to mean? It means, I mean that you'll do something stupid. This is stupid, Goku. This is just, why? Really, you're blowing this way out of proportion. Why not one of our friends, a guy who doesn't want to destroy the world? We know so many guys, what? and they're all I in just, great it's shape! Just, it's more than just looks, he was able to back it up in the ring! Tien! Tien's tall, dark, and handsome, isn't he? You had a pretty good fight with him! What, was that not competitive enough for you? Need him to try to kill you? Krillin, what are you even talking about? Oh, but no! He decided to turn over a new leaf and become a better man, and now he's boring? Is that it? No, no, Krillin, I... I was never into Tien. He, he's not my type. Oh, your type. Of course. Go ahead, Goku. Tell me. Let me in on it. Let me know how it is that this, this is the guy that meets all your standards. You don't have to sound so... Look, I, I like a guy who can put up a fight, I guess. Make it exciting. Keep me guessing, adapting, strategizing. Piccolo, in that ring, he was going toe-to-toe -to -toe with me. It was engaging. It was fun. Fun? It was fun? He almost killed you, Goku. It, it was, uh, I mean, up until that, that point, it was fun. That's just unhealthy, Goku. You need someone to go that hard? There was a time, you know, we went head to head in the tournament. Is that not enough anymore? Krillin, what are you no, even- No, no, Goku, why not me, huh? Why not Krillin? Why not your old buddy, Krillin? What's he got that I don't Krillin, know? Krillin, I- Is it because he's taller than me? Krillin, what are you even talking about here? I'm talking about crushes, Goku, and about competition, about keeping pace, about being exciting to you. You can't get that from me? You need to go out there and nearly get yourself killed by a demon? Why? Why do you think this guy is the one, and not me, or Tien, or some other guy? What? What is it? Just say it. Krillin, I... We're not even talking about the same thing. Oh no, go on, say it. Say it, go on. Go on, Goku, say it. What makes him so special, huh? Huh? Say the words. He, he, he's just the strongest guy I ever fought. I've never felt so alive. Never, huh? Wait, Krillin, Never I... felt so alive, so it's just... It's just like that, huh? Krillin, I didn't No, eat. no, no, it's clear. He, he gives you something I never could. I never said that. You were very clear, Goku. I'm not stupid, Goku. We all know. We all saw how strong you are now. You, you're untouchable. You're on another level. You're completely different from the rest of us. We could never compare. We, we couldn't even come close to Piccolo. And that's why. That's why. That's why it's him and not me. And then it all goes quiet. Goku can only stare at Krillin, tears brimming in his eyes as he grits his teeth. Krillin jerks to one side, turning away from his old friend. So the argument stops in its tracks, right there. They stand there in silence for some time. Then, Goku speaks up. Krillin. I'm sorry. I, I get it now. I've been away for so many years, and this must all be a lot for you to think about all at once. I know it's not the best that I feel this way about Piccolo, but but it doesn't change the way I feel about you or any of the others. That fight that you and I had the tournament, it's still one of my fondest memories. It always will be. I'm sorry I made you feel like, like I could just replace you. Krillin turns back to him. No, Goku, I... That was out of line. It's not your fault, I'm just... I'm scared. I feel like I don't even... I don't even know my best friend anymore. You're so strong now, so far away from me. But... But you're still my friend. It's like I said before, I accept you as you are. Gay, straight, or... 
crushing on Piccolo. Goku gives his best shot at a smile. Thank you, Krillin. I won't do anything stupid, I promise. Now, what do you say we spend that prize money? Drinks are on me. And so, these two friends came away from that argument all the better. Goku got a bit of a reality check about his crush, and Krillin got to say all the things that might have gone unsaid otherwise. Things about his feelings of inferiority and his alienation from this person he once knew. They ate and drank long into the night, and when it came time to return to their apartments, hearts all flutter, they ended up sharing a bed. And perhaps it's best to leave what happened between them. Two boyhood friends, now meeting each other for the first time as men. If you're really curious, nothing much would come of that night, that one night stand, but their bond was far stronger for it. The two had never been closer. Now, I'm sure you're all wondering what will become of Chi Chi and the wedding to Goku that was all for naught. Well, as she's spiraling in the women's restroom, who should come in to lend a sympathetic ear but Bulma? You'll remember that she was the first to think of Chi-Chi's reaction. Having had her own turbulent relationship, she knows what it's like to love and lose. Everything may seem hunky-dory between her and her beau, Yamcha, but you've got to remember that he spent a lot of time out training these past several years, first with Corrin and then in the wilderness on his own adventure, and in canon we all know that it doesn't really work out in the end. So, this meeting gives both of them a lot to think about in regards to the foolishness of young love. A friendship quickly blossoms, and rather than waste all the preparations for the wedding, Bulma insists they throw a party just for kicks. After all, why mope around over some guy who didn't even know what marriage was, when you can redirect that energy towards having a fun time with your girl best friend? The pair became closer and closer as they planned their big bash, and Despite the fact that nobody was really getting married, Bulma just thought it'd be fun if it had that sort of theme. You know, a wedding themed party. I mean, hey, Chi Chi wanted a wedding, right? Why not just throw one anyway, with just the two of them? Who said a wedding needs a group? So they spent their time together picking out floral arrangements, choosing the music for their dance, and all the while Bulma was playing this kind of coy game with Chi Chi where they act like they were the ones getting married. Ha ha ha, how funny. Chi Chi finds Bulma's eccentricity so utterly charming. And, well, Bulma, she enjoys confounding and flustering this country girl, who's not used to all the glitz and glamour of having a rich best friend from the city. She might have taken it a bit far when she bought her an expensive engagement ring, something she realised the moment she gave it to Chi Chi and, well... They both sort of took a step back and asked, What are we? I mean, how was Chi Chi supposed to take something like that? Her new best friend proposing to her out of the blue with the biggest diamond she'd ever seen. Was it just to cheer her up? Just part of the theme? Or could it be that all this time they'd spent supporting one another, listening to each other, laughing, crying, consoling, being there for each other? Could this all along have been... Love? The true love that she's been searching for? For Bulma's part, she's just as lost, and she was the one who proposed. She thought she was just playing around with a friend, but after seeing Chi Chi take that so earnestly and emotionally, she realized that she needed to take a long look at herself in the mirror and, and figure out what her motivation has been all this time. And after a lot of soul searching, she came to the conclusion that she should get herself fit for a tux. That's right. You thought it was just going to be Goku who was gay, but oh ho ho, we couldn't just leave Chi Chi hanging like that. So instead of marrying Goku, she marries the other protagonist of Dragon Ball, Bulma. It's a pretty natural fit, all things considered. Chi Chi cares a lot about proper education, financial stability, and a partner who can give her some grand impulsive gestures of affection and a partner who's really passionate whether it comes to their work or their relationships. And Bulma's got all that in spades. And again, they bond over their follies as young girls chasing love. Bulma, of course, has to let Yamcha down easy. But don't worry, he's got his eye on someone else too. So it all works out. 
Wink. Finally, there's one more thing that happened in the time skip that we're gonna have to consider. What about Gohan? In this world, without Goku and Chi Chi getting together, what will become of their half Saiyan son? What ramifications will this have on the world? A world without Gohan? Ugh, I shudder to think. But oh, never fear, because I thought of a little solution to that too. Remember when Goku promised to make it up to Chi Chi somehow? Well, of course, soon after marrying, Chi Chi's eager to become a mother and really live out the sweet married life that she's wanted for so long. And so, with the wonders of modern science, Goku finally has his chance to pitch in and make up for that broken promise. That's right, Chi Chi still has Gohan, only his mom is Bulma and, well, his name isn't Gohan, of course. Instead, they name him Boxer. Yes, I know, I've used that one before in my What If Goku Landed at Capsule Corp series, but hey, if it ain't broke. Plus, it's got Ox in it! Something that I'm sure will make Ox King a very happy grandpa. Still, what does Goku do for three years as a bachelor? Well, he definitely explores his sexuality, but relationships with normal people just aren't the right fit for him. He does track down Piccolo a time or two, mostly because he's bored out of his mind. Living alone in the mountains can kind of weigh on you. But Piccolo made it pretty clear that his company wasn't wanted, at least until he perfects this special technique of his. Believe me, when I'm ready to kill you, I'll find you myself. The next time you see me, it'll be the day you die. Well, uh, okay, you know where to find me. In any case, three years pass, and a familiar saying pod lands in a farmer's fields. Oh yeah, it's Raditz time! Things go mostly unchanged. Raditz meets Piccolo first, and then he flies to Kame House, where Goku and Ko are having a reunion. Only this time, it's Bulma who brings the baby. And isn't he adorable? Aww. But then, this get-together is crashed by the same warrior who reveals himself as Goku's long-lost brother and explains his extraterrestrial origins. Of course, when he notices Boxer, things go a little differently. That boy there, he's your son, isn't he? What? No. What? Well, he's not my son. He's Bulma and Chi Chi's son. He's... He has a tail! Well, I did help him out a little bit. What? To be honest, I don't really understand it myself. Oh, whatever, I'm taking him anyway! And so he does, despite Goku and Mother Bear's Bullman, Chi Chi, who obviously wouldn't take this line down, doing everything they can to resist it. It's just too strong, leaving even Goku in a crumpled heap for daring to refuse his offer to join them. Goku is livid. Sure, it's not his baby boy in this scenario, but it's his best friend's son. He's practically family anyway. Not to mention Bulma and Chi Chi are absolutely losing their heads over this. How could this happen? How could this guy just roll up and take him? Just then, who else but Piccolo appears? Q was surprised and slightly flustered Goku. Whoa, Piccolo? What are you doing here? I couldn't help but notice that alien paid you a visit as well. He crossed me. And if he gets his way, then I'll never be able to conquer this planet. It would seem that we'd be better off working together to defeat him. Goku's heart's practically doing somersaults at those words. It feels like he has to pinch himself. You, you want to team up with me? I don't like it either, Piccolo says, completely oblivious. I wouldn't be suggesting it if there were another option. But on our own, he'd destroy either one of us. The only way we stand a chance is by combining our powers. As much as it makes me sick to admit it. Composing himself, Goku puts on a more serious face. You're right. I'm way outmatched. I really could use your help here. Tch. Think of it more as me helping myself. This doesn't make us allies, understand? As soon as this is taken care of, you're next. Goku smirks. <laughs> of course. Wouldn't expect anything else, Piccolo. And that is where we're going to be leaving things for right now. So what do you guys think? Could this be an opportunity for romance to bloom between our hero and his rival? What will become of Boxer? Will Raditz become a main character in this what if? Is Raditz gay too? As always, leave a comment below and let's get this discussion going. And I'll see you in the next video. Catch you later!